In this video I'm going to show you how to use the Aquarel 2 Photoshop action. So the way the action works is you open up your photo, you simply brush your subject with the color and just play the action. So here's the effect that the action creates. As you can see what the action does, it transforms the photo into the aquarel or the watercolor effect. And the results that you get are fully layered, so there is a lot of options for uh, customizing the results. And the action is also created so that every time you run the action, you'll get a unique result, even if you use the same brush area. So you always get unique uh, watercolor variation. And the action also creates even 4D preset color looks that you can choose from. All right, so let me just close these two windows now. So after you open up your photo, before you use the action, there are just a few things that you should check just to make sure that the action will run uh, without any errors. So the first thing you should check is that your photo is the background layer. So it should be called the background and have this little lock icon. So if you have something like this or anything else, just go to layer, new and choose a background from layer. Then click on this menu icon over here and choose panel options. And just make sure that this option here, the add copy, the copy layer is groups checked. Then go to image mode and make sure your photo is the RGB color mode 8 bit kennel. You can also check the image size from here. So for best results, you should use the images that are somewhere between 20 and 40, 4500 uh, pixels wide or high. Okay. So what you need to check uh, more is to choose here the uh, R history brush tool and just make sure that you get the same settings uh, as I have here. So mode should be set to normal, op uh, opacity to 100%. Uh, these two icons uh, should be unchecked and the style should be set to tight short, area to 50 pixels and tolerance to 0%. Okay. Now you can just go to window actions to open up the actions panel, click on this menu icon over here, choose load actions and just choose the action from folder according to a Photoshop version. Select the action file, choose load and the action will appear here in your actions panel. Then you can just hit B on your keyboard to select the brush tool. Right click anywhere inside the canvas, uh, then click on the gear icon, load brushes and again just choose the brushes from a folder according to a Photoshop version, choose load and the brush will appear here in your brushes panel. And now just choose the panel stamp tool from here. Click on this little uh, arrow icon, gear icon, then load patterns. And again, uh, choose the pattern, a file from the folder according to the Photoshop version. Choose load and there will be one pattern lo uh, loaded here in your patterns panel. And all you have to do now is just to go to layer, new layer, to create a new layer and name this layer brush. All letters must be lowercase, all right, because otherwise the action won't work. So you need to type the uh, word brush exactly like this. Choose OK. And now while the brush layer is selected, you can just hit B on your keyboard, select the brush tool, right click anywhere inside the canvas, and um, pick a soft brush, choose any color, color pick doesn't matter, and simply brush over your subject with a color, just like this. Right? You can quickly change the size of the brush by using the square brackets in a keyboard where you need the more detail brushing. All right, so I'm just gonna open up the, my PSD file where I've already done the brushing before. All right, so here it is. And as you can see, you don't have to be uh, much precise with the brushing. And all you have to do now is just select the Aquarel to action inside the folder and click play. And I'm going to fasten the video here and I'm going to get back as soon as the action is finished. And then I'm going to go throughout all the layers to show you how each layer works. Uh, how it affects the design and how can you customize it. All right. All right, so the action has just finished, so I'm just gonna close the actions panel. And the first thing that you probably want to do each time you run the action is to just quickly close down all these folders. So how can you quickly do that? You just hold Control and Alt buttons for PC or Command option for a Mac. And while the, this folder is selected, just click on this little arrow here. And that way we're going to close down all the folders. So I'm going to start customizing this effect from the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide all these layers. And the first layer that we got here is the original photo uh, layer, the background layer. So next what we got here is the background watercolor. And what you can do here is that you can play with the opacities of these layers or hide some layers to reveal a different look. When you go from the bottom to the top, you will see that uh, every next layer is going to reveal more and more details. 
right? But also create a different um, different textures um, and different effect, right? So how you change the opacity is you just uh, select the layer and you can either click on this arrow here and move this slider around or you can just click on the word opacity and drag it aside all right so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna change the opacity of this layer here this one too. So I'm just going to uh, keep the other layers as default. So you can change the opacities here, you can hide some layers, you can also uh, select uh, the layer mask of any of those layers, um, uh, pick a brush tool, uh, choose a soft brush, set foreground color to black and simply brush over the area where you wish to remove the specific layer. Right? So if there's some detail uh, that you wish to remove from some texture, you can just select that layer, uh, select the layer mask of that layer, and then just simply brush to delete, or you can change the uh, foreground color to white and brush to reveal again uh, the layer on those areas. Okay, so the next one we got here is the subject watercolor. So this layer. Um, this photo is also layered as you can see. So um, these layers here are creating the watercolor effect only over the subject area thanks to these uh, layer masks that you can uh, shift click to disable them and then you'll apply these effect of these layers to the whole photo. And what you can do here is you can again change the opacities. These layers should give um, a little bit more details to the subject, right? Just like that. And now I'm just going to skip over this layer and uh, go to the subject details layer, right? So these. Um, this uh, folder is going to really uh, reveal a lot of details of your subject and when you open up the folder you will find uh, that you got here the, the black edges, you got the white edges and you got the reveal details layer. So what you can do is you can play with the pass of these layers right, to, uh, to reveal details as you like. So I'm just going to increase the opacity a little bit to reveal more details. just like that. And what we got here uh, is the layer mask and if you open the properties panel you'll see that density of this layer mask is set to 80 percent. So if it's it, if it was set a hundred percent then these layers would be visible only uh, where the subject area is, right? Or the brush area. However, when it's set to 80 percent these layers are slightly visible outside of this area too. If you set density to 0% then this layer will be completely visible over the whole photo. All right? So you can control with this, with the density here, how much uh, you wish that these details are visible outside of your subject area. Okay? So I'm going to set it like this. Again, you have the layer mask here uh, for these layers too, so you can remove uh, any specific part of these layers uh, if you like. Okay, And what we got here is the uh, reveal original photo uh, brush white into the mask layer. So um, when you turn off and on this layer you see that uh, nothing actually happens because this layer has a layer mask here. So what you do is you select the layer mask, pick a brush tool, set for color to white, and as it said here in the name, you brush white into the mask. Um, you brush white into the mask over the areas where you wish to reveal the details uh, uh, more. You're actually going to reveal the original photo with some 
uh, subtle effects added so I'm just gonna adjust the brush size and I'm going to brush a little bit just to add a little bit more details right just like that and if you wish to remove um, some details uh, for example we should remove some details here but you wish them to be uh, less visible than uh, the other details you can just uh, lower the opacity of the brush right and you're going to reveal uh, the details but uh, not as much as the main details that you wanted to reveal right so uh, what you can also do here is you can change the opacity of this layer right the next one we got here are the textures right so we got a two textures layer here right so one is the uh, pure canvas texture and here we got another one right so what you can do again is you can play with the opacities of these layers right these details are visible uh, better when you when you zoom in your photo Uh, as they are uh, subtle details okay so the next one we got here are the color uh, color looks so as I had mentioned at the beginning of the video uh, you can choose from 40% color looks all right so this color looks here is turned on by default and all you have to do is to select any of the color looks here turn it on see how it looks if you don't like it simply try with another until you find one that goes best with your photo and what you can also do is you can combine a few of color looks. So for example, you turn on this one here, but you lower the opacity. And then you turn on another one, lower the opacity, and then create some unique color look. All right. And in this example, I'm going to use this one here. I'm going to keep the opacity at default. And what we got here is the randomized colors layer. So you can double click on this layer thumbnail here and you can change the hue value to quickly randomize the colors of your photo and get some interesting results. All right. The next one we got here is the overall brightness. So when you double click here, you can adjust the brightness using these uh, five sliders over here. So this one here is going to boost the shadows of your photo. This one is boosting the highlights, and you can use this one here to control the mid-tones. Okay. And this one here is fading the shadows, this one here is fading the highlights. So you can use them to adjust the brightness uh, as you like. I'm going to set it like this. And the next layer we got here is the overall contrast. So how you adjust the contrast is you change the opacity. So you're just going to click on the vertical opacity and drag it aside. All right. The next we got here is the overall vibrance and saturation layer. So you double click here and using these two sliders, you can adjust the vibrance and the saturation of your photo. Okay. And last we got the overall sharpening layer. Now, if you made any changes uh, to the layers here, you changed, for example, the opacity of some layer, removed uh, some uh, area of some layer, and uh, or literally made any other changes, you should create this layer again. Because as you can see, if I move this layer around, you will see all these lines. These are the lines that are giving the sharpening to the photo. But when you make some changes to the photo, these lines need to be updated as well. So you just delete this layer and press Control, Alt, Shift, and D, or Command, Option, Shift, and D on your keyboard make a screenshot then press control or command shift U to, to saturate this layer you go to filter other high pass set radius to 2 pixels and just change the blending mode of this layer to soft light okay and what 
you can do now is you can adjust the amount of sharpening by changing the opacity. I'm going to leave it default. What you can also do now is if you like you can add some text. So I'm going to use this font over here and I'm just going to add some text over here. I'm going to press Control Command uh, J on my keyboard to duplicate this layer. Then select this text and just gonna decrease the size All right and to change the color you just double click on the layer and choose the color from here now you can choose any color and what I like to do is to use some color from the photo All right so using this color picker you can just click uh, anywhere of your photo to pick some color and then you can readjust the color okay and I'm going to change the color this one here Okay, so that's it. And let's just quickly check the before and after. So I'm just gonna duplicate this layer here. So this was uh, the before photo, and here is the after. All right. And if you want to play the action again, what you can do is you can just delete all these layers here and just leave the brush and background layer and just select the action click play and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video you're going to get a unique result so you'll get a unique uh, texture variation uh, each time you run the action All right so I hope you understood everything but if you still need any help or you got any questions feel free to contact me anytime via my Envato profile page thanks for watching